Hey, I'm John Isner. Hey, I'm uh, Nicolas Mahout. And we're here to talk about the match of the century. This is the first time that this has happened to get you guys together to talk about this match. How in the world is this possible that this has to, hasn't happened before? At a certain point, I just wanted to forget about the match that we played because everyone was asking us questions about it. I feel like 10 years later, I'm... Um... I'm, I'm okay and I want to talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. What was your deep motivation like, that allowed you to dig, to dig uh, so deep? My mom was, was watching that match in the crowd for 11 hours. She, she watched the whole thing and, and she, she survived cancer. So really, she's always been my biggest inspiration. I knew that no matter how difficult tennis seemed, it wasn't as difficult as what she went through. So that, that was a, a huge source of inspiration for me. I wanted to prove myself and prove to others that I was tough. And also, like John said, um, my mom died in 2005. When I was young, she was telling me that uh, when I play tennis, when I do something and I feel tired or feel the fatigue, I can go uh, over the limit. There's something behind the limit. And then, um, well, I was thinking about her and I said, well, this is the time, this is the moment you can, you can show her and she will be proud. So there's, I think, you have the, the pretty much the, the, the same thing. That's really cool. I might have slept two hours and it was a bad two hours. And I woke up on that third day not feeling good at all. And then I went to the practice courts and I saw Nico warming up full of energy and full of beans. And I'm like, crap, this guy is just not gonna, he's not gonna give in it. That, you know, that just showed me that like, I needed to match you again. And that's what I was trying to do. I slept so bad, like I, I had to sleep three hours. I couldn't stop thinking about that match. And yeah. you know what, just pretending. I was just pretending because I was tired, of course. I wanted you to think that I will never stop. When you guys walked on court on the third day, you had a smile on your face, and Nico, you were like game face. We had the ushers escorting us to the court, and every all the fans on the ground were like, "Oh, there they are! There they are!" Like we were like rock stars or something, you know? <laughs> and we're going out to, and we get on the court, and we had this standing ovation. And I remember getting goosebumps from that, and that gave me even more adrenaline. It's definitely at the top. But two things: I was worried about my abdominals. I didn't know if I be able to serve so i was worried and also the, the only concern i had is okay we played seven hours the day before if you come back on court and play two games i didn't want me to come back and play like five minutes the handshake was actually kind of not quite to the level of the of the immensity of the match because it was two different emotions right i mean nico was extremely devastated and i was thrilled that, that, that I won the match. But if I had to change only one thing on that match it would be the handshake. Because I think we deserve something better, I would say, after this, this match. But I was somewhere else already. After we played, we just became such good friends. And it's just because of that match. So mm -hmm. for me, maybe I lost the match, but I, I won by many ways much more. Yep. No, that's, that's, that's very nice, Nico. And we don't just say that to make the story seem cooler. He's an incredible guy with an incredible family. And we've both gotten to, uh, we've both gotten to enjoy really getting to, to know each other since that match.